Okay, finishing up my coffee, making sure I'm current on videos, and then it's time for a good long day of road slash ATV walking. But not in the rain today, allegedly. Oh, what is this weird sunshiny thing? Ball of fire in sky. Okay, so due to COVID precautions, I am eating out in the parking lot by Subway uh, breakfast sandwich and carrying a foot long for the rest of the day, plus more coffee. So once again, the biggest obstacle to me making really big miles every day is my desire to drink coffee and my inability not to talk too much to random people. So I did have to come off trail a little bit in order to get to the hotel, obviously, but I'll be picking up my ATV uh, track on the other side of the bridge, I think. And back on the ATV trail. It's even paved now, what do you know? Okay, one of my complaints since getting into Canada was lack of any place to sit other than the side of the road. I officially withdraw that comment though. That is one hell of a bench. Okay, bridge time. Where's taters when you need her? Sure is heck not in Florida anymore, huh? Okay, so I actually ran into a gentleman who lives out here and uh, was actually excited to see a, you know, backpacker doing this. So apparently these ATV roads get a lot of ATV traffic on the weekends, but hiking long distances, just not so much of a thing out here. And I've been looking as I go. I mean, obviously there's this trail, so this is great. No parks, no bathrooms, water sources, it's just runoff. And any camping is just gonna have to be stealth camping. So you look off into the bushes and there have been some options, but I gotta find some place that's not really close to houses. Seems like every time I get into a groove and start to make good pro progress, I end up meeting some really friendly person and spending way too much time talking with them. So the guy back there was in his backyard. He gave me a bunch of fruit and uh, said that he's lived in this area for 30 years and if I need anything, you can basically knock on the door of any of these houses and cabins and things and people will help you out. So that's good to hear. He also gave me some hope that there's gonna be some uh, stealth sites up ahead in another four miles or so. There's a store I'm gonna stop by, top off my water, see what they have, and then, you know, fill up for the night and be ready to find a spot. I'm not feeling real motivated to hike late today. And I don't know if that's just coming from the whole, I've got 160 miles left, so I can just cruise and that's no problem. You know, no big challenges, anything like that. Uh, not having any time pressure to get to Gas Bay anymore. Or if I'm just, you know, hung over from all the excitement yesterday, because I was pretty much giddy coming across the border. And then, you know, that went straight into the storm, so I was moving hard all day. But this morning, I swear, ever since I woke up, I really wish I was still in that bed in that hotel. I keep saying when I come off of this trail, what I need is like a remote cabin somewhere with a wheelbarrow full of produce and beer and then just sleep for a week or two. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm going to go back to the campground in Southern California and that gets all sorts of complicated because we have to clear out every weekend, you know, it's not a long-term campsite, so we just kind of come and go. <laughs> I get exhausted just thinking about some of what I have to go back to. At least I do have the wilderness class to look forward to. Also, after the PCT, everything was uh, locked down when I came back, so I didn't get to see friends after doing that big thing. So I am hoping that I can have some sort of a safe, but, you know, a gathering to see people. Because it's been, you know, two years and about 50 lifetimes since I've seen most of them. Okay, I don't really need a resupply, but I could use some tortillas and a couple other things, you know. So I already had fruit, and I'm still carrying a couple days of food. And Jen sent me those uh, Santa Fe beans that are so good. So I decided to go for treats. So in there, I got a bottle of wine repackaged inside of a, you know, plastic bottle. Uh, two things of Skittles, and they actually had tortillas and cheese. 
So I am really excited. Also, geez, that forward facing camera is really not good in weird lighting. <laughs> I saw a newspaper when I was uh, picking out some of the stuff in there and everything is about how they're gonna start requiring proof of vaccination here shortly, <laughs> which I'm good. I have my back scar. Beyond that, everybody's been super friendly. Though I did have a woman who walked in the store, took one look at me, her eyes went wide, and then she disappeared out into the store, grabbed her mask, and then came back. Not sure what to make of that. But. So in addition to filling my water bottles there, uh, I was able to find some tortillas, which uh, took a little explaining, because the guy was like, you want taco shells? Ethnic food is how he uh, categorized it. And then I decided to splurge and get some wine because the only beer they had was what I would have qualified as crap beer in 36 can cases. So I still have an hour or two of daylight left here. I'm basically just gonna clear the town area. And it looks like there's some more open areas. One of the gentlemen I talked to in front of his house said, yeah, I should be able to find a place to bed down for the night there. Okay, normally I'd hike a little further, but I'm ready to set up for the night. I think I'm away from anybody. I tried to pick a place that was far back from houses and things. Home sweet home for the night, hopefully anyway. Welcome to a cold, foggy morning, covered in slugs, again. You know, I would totally be narrating a whole, like, IAT main retrospective right now, but stealth camping, gotta stay quiet. So I thought it was raining on me last night, but I think it was just the fog and my tent is soaked. But, you know, I'm close to a river, so that's kind of expected. So that's where I ended up spending the night last night. I was basically on the other side of that hedge. Looks like an old field that's been overgrown for years. There is some sort of, I don't know what that is, but I didn't get anywhere near it. And nobody bothered me last night. I was close enough to a house where I was a little nervous, but... <laughs> So if you've been following me since uh, Florida, you know I'm not the biggest fan of stealth camping. Whenever possible, I will try and go to lengths to avoid it, especially in the more populated areas like this. It's not that I'm afraid I'm going to get arrested or anything like that. It's just, it's a stressor I don't want. I really enjoy just relaxing when I crawl into my tent. And when you're hearing noises nearby and you're like, oh, oh, I wonder if they're coming this way. That harsh is my buzz. I actually uh, sat there f until dark last night just to make sure because I could hear something coming from the other side of the trail. And, you know, for all I knew, somebody was going to come over. And if they did, you know, maybe I would have been fine because I would have talked to them. And, oh, and, you know, I would have happily offered to move. Also, you know, the ground I was on back there was obviously vegetation. This is another reason it's really good I have my foam pad. I did everything I could, stomped it down, checked that there was nothing too sharp, set up the tent, got in there with my pad, laid it down, and phew, I had a stick shoot straight through the pad and the bottom of my tent. But that already has a bunch of holes. I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to replace my Hornet before the Continental Divide Trail. And at this point, I'm intending just to get another two-person Hornet, the you know non-elite base model. Because that thing has put up with a lot of abuse. I've seen reviews online, people saying, oh, it doesn't hold up terrain, and I have no idea what they're talking about. Because, as you have seen on this, I have had it through quite a bit of rain and all sorts of configurations. Started seeing these odd mushrooms on the side of the trail. Massive. Look kind of cool, though. Okay, clouds are burning off. Might even get to uh, dry my rain fly today. Okay, so resupply options in this town were a little limited, but there is an Italian restaurant called Pepino's where the owners were super nice and they had family members that had done the AT. So I was able to charge my batteries there and get my water filled up. Uh, the Canadian dollar was my resupply and I was able to get enough, though it's not really dense stuff, which is why you can see my already overloaded looking pack has gotten even bigger. Well, hell, thought I was gonna be back on the ATV trail. 
This might be a roadwalk now. <laughs> So I kept hoping I'd find somebody I could ask for water, but I also didn't want to wander up somebody's driveway. I've uh, known too many people who are rather hostile to that when that happens. So I did eventually find a stream. This does go underneath the road. So obviously I took it from up above, ran it through my filter. It's fine. It doesn't taste like Band-Aids like that one night on the AT. Okay, so it's 8.15. Honestly, I'm just looking for a place to set up. Unfortunately, that means I have to find a place out of view of all these houses. Or somebody friendly enough to let me sit up in their backyard somewhere. But I never have much luck running into anybody chatty this late in the day. Okay, so I talked to a local and apparently all the woods back behind these houses are timberland. So on their recommendation, I took one of the dirt roads and I'm now back far enough where you can't even see the dirt road. So should be safe for the night. So once again, I'm very happy to have this little uh, two-person tent because it just barely fits in almost anywhere. Not as good as my bivy, but, you know, trying to find something for that Tiger Wall three-person that Taters and I use is such a pain. Well, Taters would be happy. I seem to have been invaded by a frog.